Hey guys, we're back with another of our series with champion Muay Thai fighter Bryce Frank. And this series is awesome. If you haven't tuned in, this is learning how to strike in the context of self-protection from a national champion. So today we're talking about the overhand right. Awesome. You love that punch. It just I do. chops a man down to the yes, ground like I chopping do. wood. You and I have done a video on that in the past. I think it was about a 20, 25 minute video. So we went pretty deep, deep into the into weeds it. on it. We won't go quite as deep on that today, but we will kind of review those points. But I'd urge your viewers to check out that previous video to really get deeper into the weeds on that. Cool. And just so you guys are aware, this is an ongoing series. There is a bunch of great information uh, with this video going backwards, teaching you how to stand, how to move, how to make a fist. So make sure you go back and check that stuff out. The overhand, uh, overhand right for me, but it could be overhand left if you're a, if you're a southpaw, a left-handed person, is really very robust punch. It's, it's, it's got a lot of utility, it's very powerful, and there's a lot of things I can do off of it. So that's why I like it so much. Okay. All right, so things we need to think about for the overhand to make it work are thrust, torque, head position, and chopping that shot down like you had referenced to, okay? So that's what really makes it an overhand, is not that I'm hitting from up over, but that I'm chopping my shot down, down. at the so end. So it can be right, right it can there. be a, The shot can come out relatively straight, but I still chop it down at the end, okay? And this shot gives me a lot of uh, options, that can do a lot of damage, but it gives me options to tie up with somebody, it gives me options to separate from somebody. I can chain other punches off of it, obviously, okay? So there's a lot of utility here, um, I think it's a, very, very excellent strike. And this and the straight jolt, which we've also done a video on, would be the absolute, from a punching standpoint, would be the absolute foundation of what I would teach somebody for striking, for, for a self-defense situation. So we've got this overhand is gonna lead into another series of punches. Right, into like a boxing blast. Okay. The, again, the way the overhand works is for I need to push off the back toe. That's where I'm gonna get thrust from again. So we're here in our good defensive posture. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure that you're not practicing. We're, again, we're talking about self-defense. So we wanna make sure that we're not practicing our techniques from an offensive setting, but we're practicing from a defensive setting. Hey man, I don't want any back up. Right, and we're using those verbalizations, right? You know, we're running through the verbal strategies, you know, asking them to respect your space, telling them to respect your space. These are not the droids you're looking for. Right, and then ultimately making them respect your space, right, if ask and tell fails. Mm -hmm. So we're here in this good defensive posture. Now I'm gonna drive off the back toe with thrust, okay? And then I'm going to, torque is gonna come from the rotation of my body, and it's also gonna come from the rotation of my wrist on the target here, all right? So from here, I drive off and here, and, and I, I'm gonna hit that strike down. See how I chop mm -hmm. down, down on that strike, all Oops. right? Yeah, I want that here to, I wanna actually, if I'm hitting the chin, I wanna actually kinda sit you down. I actually wanna sit you down with that shot, kinda set you in place and so I can continue to move, okay? okay. So from here again, I'm in this position, thrust off the back toe. Now, how much thrust I'm gonna use is gonna depend upon the distance. So out here, I might need a lot of thrust, okay? If we're in close, I don't have much room to, to, to use thrust because I'm gonna end up in a clinch if I do, but here it's more torque, where I'm gonna really torque that shot hard, all right? So from here, thrust and torque, chop down. What I wanna do with my head is I wanna place my head over my lead knee. Okay, so I'm here, I put the head over the lead knee this way, right over top of the lead knee. I can't go forward of the knee, but I wanna be right over the lead knee. And the, what this does here is this is gonna help me build a defense into my offense, okay? It's also gonna give me a little more power on the end of that shot by dropping my head down, okay? But when I come in here and I drop this head down on the end of my shot like this, and I've got my other hand here protecting. So if you're throwing a straight, this is gonna whiz by my head here. If you're throwing a hook on this side, I'm protected over here. My shoulder over here is protecting me from any type of hooking motion on the other side. Here, all right, so I'm in this good defensive shell. Anything you can really throw is gonna do no more than really just maybe skip Glance off the top off of my head. Hair. Yeah, so from here, that's the basics of the overhand, getting that down and throwing hard. Now, once we've done that, we wanna start thinking about stringing together with some of the other punches, okay? so. And in that other video we did, you can go watch the breakdown of how to build that. So as we've told you, you got to work through the, the minute details of this so that it looks fluid like you're demonstrating. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to, you know, again, the big problem I see with people teaching combination punches is a lot of times they don't have 
the individual ser punches in the series down before they start stringing them together. Mm -hmm. All right, even though it's a combination. Looks sexy with some pad yeah, slapping. But... Exactly, even though it's a combination, every single punch in that combination needs to be done properly. All right, otherwise it's not gonna set me up for the next punch. All right, so again, spend some time building that overhand. All right, and then we could even look at throwing, for example, the straight jolt into the overhand. All right, so I'm here, straight jolt will lift you up, overhand will chop, chop down. down. So that's what I want, you know, I want that, think of that straight jolt coming up and driving you up into the air and then chopping down with the overhand. Boom. My fault. Nope, that was me. There. I wanted to take the blame, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's a good, ideal way to uh, work that off of the straight jolt. Okay. You know, putting those two punches together, because I lift you up with the first one, and then chop you down with the second one. Ouch. Okay. Other things I can look at doing is the boxing blast. Okay, so boxing blast was made popular by uh, Straight Blast Gym. If you look in the uh, early days of the UFC, you saw Vitor Belfort do this very effectively against Vandalay Silva. And the way the boxing blast looks without anyone in front of me is I literally would just throw punches as I'm running forward like this. Okay, so I'm gonna and blast the through. The opponent ends up getting on his heels. Yeah, exactly. It's a straight line of aggression. All right. Now, that's great and it's a fabulous skill, but we wanna make sure that we've built up the individual punches in the series before we work on stringing them all together. All right. So now, once I've done that and I can do that without a partner, I work on developing that overhand and then I'm gonna work on stepping forward and throwing those punches. And as I'm stepping forward, notice my head is changing it's slots moving. every time. It's going over the lead knee every time I throw. Okay, so that's what's important. So we'll do that with the pads. We'll just do like two or three because we don't have a ton of room right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I start here. I can even go straight jolt, overhand, and then one, two, three. Okay, or just overhand, boom, and then one, two, three. Okay. And again, then we can start working on some of those drills we worked on in our footwork series. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I go overhand into the boxing blast, one, two, three, you cover up. I post off and then move and go ahead and arm up. So that's where we could start working on plugging those things together with the end of the boxing blast and making that boxing blast really, really effective. Other things we could look at doing is using the boxing blast to tie up. So the boxing blast, can work great for mowing through somebody and getting the hell out of dodge. It can also work great to tie somebody up. Okay. Okay. So if I come here and I work on here and I go one, two, three. Okay. Let's actually back this up a little bit. Run out of mat space here. Good. All right. So we'll go, I'm gonna turn you that way just a little bit. I don't want to push into the wall. We'll go here. One, two, three. Now I can work on tying up here. Okay. With that frame. Or I can go one, two, and work on tying up on this side, okay? So those are different things we can do with that drill, work on tying up or work on blasting right through. We're just using the the, uh, the beginning strikes to get us to whatever the thing is we wanna pu plug in. Absolutely. Take down a clinch, a tie Take down up. Take a clinch, a tie up. Uh, make a space and draw a weapon. Absolutely. Cool. All right. What else would you add to that? What should the practitioner be thinking about what are some pitfalls uh the biggest problem i see in trying to teach this the boxing blast is that people don't get the footwork down so i would spend some time without a partner or anything just drilling the footwork okay, okay. so i'm here i'm in my defensive posture i throw this overhand i've got my make sure i've got you know head over the lead knee i've got good torque i've got good thrust and now as i step forward i come and reverse everything on the reverse other side. Out. And reverse the other side. And take your time developing that. It looks so simple the way you do it because you've done it 20 gazillion times. But I know even myself, just, you know, as I'm thinking about that, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. need to force myself to think about, okay, what's next? Right. And we want to think about using our body weight ideally too. So as I, it, it, as I hit, this is when my foot should be landing. So I come here with the first shot and as I'm stepping, as the foot lands, the fist is landing. As the foot lands, the fist is landing. And you're stomping so we hear it. Stomping so not, you can hear yeah, it, right. That's not. Letting people know you're not yeah. stomping the ground as you're striking. Right, yeah, so, but, the, you know, those are the things, because I don't want to put the brakes on before the shot lands, right? So I throw this shot and I take a big step forward and I put the brakes on 
and then I throw the shot, I've stopped my momentum. Yeah. I want to keep that momentum going forward. Tie it all together, link right. it together. Yeah. Cool. All right. Hey, hope you guys are digging these lessons. It's not very often you get a national champion that spends the time showing you this stuff. If you want to find him, go to Instagram, Bryce Frank on Instagram. You can send him a message. Uh, maybe we'll post up an email address for you here and you can travel to their gym Absolutely. for a large amount of cash, unfortunately, for them, not for you. And right, you can yeah. come train this stuff in person. Absolutely. Thanks, brother. Thank you. What do we got coming up next on the next video? Uh, in this next, series? we're going to start talking about some of the circular strikes, the hook and the uppercut, which again, not as foundational as the straight jolt and the overhand, but still some things we need in our, in our toolbox. Very cool. Mickey with CurryTrainer.com, Bryce Frank with Frank's Dance Emporium. We'll see you guys soon. Why are you laughing? Hey man, what are you doing in the podcast room, Steve? I'm writing a national anthem. It's gonna be at folk festivals for gunfighter gun oil. Oh. It wasn't even Bob Dylan, it was like a it was like a love story.